Good evening, and welcome back to our virtual reunion. We are here in the Julie and Spencer Penrose Athletic Center, which has been an incredible resource for our students and faculty since it opened in 2019. For our athletic teams, it is their home and hub. However, in the past year, this building has played an important role in supporting the overall health and well-being of our students and faculty. Though our options off campus have been limited, inside these walls, we have enjoyed pool parties, pumping iron, pickup games of basketball and volleyball, movies and events in the gymnasium, and of course, scaling the walls of our incredible climbing gym among the many, many other recreational activities possible in this space. The Athletic Center also represents an incredible collaborative philanthropic effort that brought together our entire community, both past and present, in support of this wonderful school, which is our stated purpose and goal for this evening as well. This afternoon, we honored alumni who have distinguished themselves through their achievements in the arts and athletics, and who have played significant roles supporting FES with leadership giving and service to the school and the world. This evening, we will hear from two current students, a ninth grader and a senior, who will share their FES stories, and in so doing, create a compelling case for your support of Fountain Valley School. Our first student speaker is Samantha Maris, who is a member of the class of 2024. Our Summit Scholarship Program provides merit-based awards to both day and boarding students, and Samantha is this year's top day student recipient. Samantha lives here in Fountain and is the daughter of Brittany Maris, who graduated from FBS in 2005. Samantha stood out during the application process because of her self-confidence, strong academic record, and her involvement in the community, which included holding student leadership positions and volunteering at the Cheyenne Mountain Zoo. And this has held true during her first year at FES. Reflecting on her work in global studies, Mr. Walker shared that, we have all benefited from Samantha's extensive contributions to class discussions, as well as her unique perspectives. Similarly, her Chapter 1 freshman orientation teacher, Mr. Racine, shared that Samantha has had no problem delving into identity, values, and perspective, and she has done so with grace and thoughtfulness. Outside of the classroom, Samantha has helped lead Unity Day workshops and other activities inspired by her Native American heritage. Samantha, we're proud of you, and it is my pleasure and honor to welcome you to our virtual stage. Yat e shik e desba, bit atni nishle, bilagana bushachin, naklena dashiche, bilagana dashnella. Hello, everybody. My name is Samantha Maris, and I am a current freshman here at Fountain Valley School. I come from the Diné tribe in Red Mesa, Arizona, and I am also Choctaw from the people of Durwood, Oklahoma. You may be wondering why I introduced myself in Navajo. Well, growing up, my Musan, which is Navajo for Grandma, always told me that when I introduced myself, to always state my clan and my native name. Growing up in a Native American household, I was told to take pride in my culture because it is who I am. Admittedly, that was a bit easier said than done. I attended an elementary school in Norman, Oklahoma. I was young, but I knew what discrimination and judgment was when it came to my culture and ethnicity. But that never stopped me from wearing my hair up in a Navajo bun at school or wearing my moccasins for Indigenous Day. But that was an elementary school. I came here to Colorado for middle school, and that is when I started becoming insecure, especially when it came to my ethnicity and culture. I remember wearing a tea cloth, which is a hair tie made from wool, for the first time in middle school. Walking into class, I knew everybody was staring at my hair, 
and I could hear people whispering around me. I didn't even make it to the second period when I took the hair tie out and I was devastated. Especially when all I heard growing up was to take pride in who I was. I was disappointed in myself for not listening to what my son and what my mom had told me. For the rest of middle school, I did not put my hair up in a tea cloth, wear beaded earrings, or wear my moccasins. The only time I felt I could express myself was outside of school, with family or at powwows. Even though at school I was considered whitewashed, I made sure to keep my culture alive by attending powwows, making jewelry, learning my native language, and keeping in contact with my family and friends on the reservation. I was having a conversation with my mom and she told me of her time here at Fountain Valley. She is a 2005 alumni and is the reason I am here today. She told stories of her time here and how she felt that she could express her Native American heritage through activities such as Unity Day or being a part of groups such as SCO. When starting my application process, I did not shy away from my culture. I wore beaded earrings, turquoise, and a tea cloth to my interviews. I talked about my time on the reservation and at the palace I attended. I finally felt that I could take pride in my culture around other people. I was ecstatic when I got the phone call telling me that I had earned a place to be a part of the class of 2024 and I had received a scholarship. Even though it is only my first year here, I have made tremendous strides and finally feeling comfortable to be able to speak and represent my culture. With such amazing faculty and peers surrounding me here at FES, I have a support group that not only allows but encourages me to speak on matters that are important to me and teach others around me about my Native American heritage. And here I am now, speaking at the 91st Fountain Valley Reunion. I have been given the most amazing opportunity to be here at Fountain Valley School. Even through the times of COVID-19 and having to adjust to these new ways of life, I am honored to be speaking here today, even if it's virtually. Fountain Valley has provided me with opportunities, even through these hectic times, to convey my Native American heritage, such as letting me perform a Native American hoop dance for Unity Day. Speaking to my friends who come from the Crow Reservation in Montana, we hope to host a powwow here at FES when things are safe again. Here, I have a clear idea of who I can be and what I can do with the opportunities that are provided to me. Thank you for providing me with a foundation where I can be myself and be given the opportunity and the tools that are needed to support my future here at Fountain Valley. Samantha, thank you for sharing your story and for all that you've contributed to this community this past school year. We are looking forward to seeing all that you will accomplish in your next three years here at FES. And now we're going to look back through the lens of our school archivist, Jake Emery, class of 1971. He, along with Sarah Bogard, who is a member of our library team, carry the torch lit by Elizabeth Froelicher. Betty, as most knew her, saw the need to capture and preserve the school's story so that it could be shared with future generations. And we are grateful to her for her foresight so that we may look back proudly on the past tonight. Tonight's trip down memory lane is distilled from the albums of photos that Jake and Sarah compiled for our reunion milestone years. I hope that they will bring you back and rekindle memories that will keep you and your classmates up late reminiscing during tonight's virtual class cocktail parties. Our slideshow's soundtrack is provided courtesy of Josh Alford who when he is not jamming out on his guitar, teaches English and outdoor ed, and manages the climbing gym here at FBS.
We have a proud history indeed. And thanks again to Jake, Sarah, and Josh for taking us back. Next, we will hear from Ezra Potts, a four-year senior who, like Samantha, is also a Summit Scholar. Ezra rides the bus from Pueblo each day, and this commute, as well as the larger journey that has taken place over the last four years, are the inspiration for what he will share with us this evening. When asked to describe Ezra and his time here at FBS, his advisor, Mr. Singmaster, answered, If Ezra's four years at Fountain Valley were compiled into a journal, it would likely be a composition of scientific field notes, engineering schematics, historically accurate humor-laced commentary, and an endless list of questions that you wish you had thought of or wondered why no one has asked. There would also likely be a bucket list of things to eat, places to travel, books to read, and people to check in on. Ezra is a high-level athlete who excels in climbing and mountain biking, and he is also a lead actor in the school's theater program. He breaks down stereotypes and leads by example, and is a true Renaissance man. To me, that sure sounds like a portrait of a graduate of which I'd be proud. And Ezra, we sure are proud of you. I love Fountain Valley. It has been my home away from home for the past four years, and I wouldn't give up the experiences I've accumulated here for anything. I came to Fountain Valley from McClellan School in Pueblo, Colorado with a bowl cut and hiking boots. Well, one of those things has changed, but Fountain Valley has given me a lot more than just an improved taste and haircut. To get to Fountain Valley was not so easy though. McClelland had, in some ways, been a feeder school to Fountain Valley for a long time, so FES had been on my radar for a while. When I was in sixth grade, my sister got into Fountain Valley, putting the pressure on me to also go. With one kid enrolled at FES, though, my application for the Summit Scholarship was very important. After spending many months of my eighth grade year applying for the Summit Scholarship, I received a call. I was driving home in the passenger seat from school one day in March. The snow had mostly melted, but in ditches it still lingered. Bright green springtime grass was just sprouting out of the otherwise yellow prairie when my phone buzzed, and the screen indicated it was Mrs. McCann. She asked me how I was and if I could talk right now. I said I could, and she informed me of the scholarship I had been awarded. I involuntarily did a full breakfast club fist in the air. I was ecstatic by the news. Getting the scholarship took a huge stressor off of my family and led me to some of the memories and experiences I hold most dearly. My first Pueblo bus ride to Fountain Valley was intimidating to say the least. My dad dropped my sister and I off in the Sam's Club parking lot I was timid and I attempted to hide behind my sister as I got on the bus to avoid our infamously loud but genuinely kind and thoughtful bus driver, Bob. As you might have guessed, this did not work. Somehow he noticed the kid carrying a backpack that stuck out half his height from his torso with a suit bag labeled Bag of Pain in his hand. This was a feeble attempt at making suit wearing less of a chore. Bob greeted me with a firm handshake, an exchange of names, and instructions of proper conduct on the bus. Things like, snacks are up here, the trash is there, and don't make a mess. I was shaking as I tried to find a seat out of sight of everyone, but the Pueblo bus kids took me under their collective wing, and the Pueblo bus has been like a family to me ever since. I truly look forward to the bus ride every evening to unwind and talk to everyone about how their days had been or play heads up until finally arriving back in the Sam's Club parking lot. Since that first day on the Pueblo bus, I have grown so much as a student and as a person. For one, I'm a foot taller, 
uh, I now know how to use my friend and I versus me and my friend. And more importantly, I know why not to correct people. My friend Riley and I learned what an endoplasmic reticulum was in freshman bio. Miss Baker taught Riley and me the situation in which Newton's second law isn't true in AP physics. Now I know how to integrate using a U substitution, and I know how to derive from the number of commas in this sentence when it has gone on too long. The most important thing I have learned from my Fountain Valley education, though, is the one thing that underlies all of FBS's core values, and that is awareness. It is the ability to look at my surroundings, my setbacks and achievements, and understand that I have the ability to look at those events any way I choose. FBS has taught me that every situation has both positives and negatives, and I always have the choice in how to look at them. Although FES Chapter 1 caused great angst and grief in the minds of every freshman who went through it, the idea of a growth mindset rings true. Any negative experience can be seen as a stepping stone on one's way to success, and any success can be seen as something to build off of. Although I am just one student and I have no fountain of knowledge, Fountain Valley has given me more than an education. It has given me a way to see the world. And that is an opportunity that everyone should have. And if you choose to donate this giving day, it won't fix the education system in the US and it probably won't get a bull cut off of some sorrily unfortunate soul but it will give someone else the amazing opportunity, which is Fountain Valley. Thank you, Ezra, for sharing your experience and perspective with us. We sure will miss you next year and look forward to watching your next chapter take shape. Each student comes to us wide-eyed and full of wisdom that we coax out of them through learning partnerships forged over time by our deeply caring and committed faculty. And in so doing, we often have the privilege to learn from and along with our students. These connections are at the heart of the value proposition we offer our families and have been for 91 years. Each of you, our FES alumni, came to us much the same as Ezra and Samantha did and emerged empowered to, as founding headmaster Francis Froelicher said, write your own histories. I hope the stories of Samantha and Ezra, juxtaposed to your own lives' paths, will inspire pride in this place, and that you will see clearly common patterns among all that intersect here at your school. Fountain Valley School has endured significant challenges in the time since January 2020 and the arrival of a then nascent pandemic that would profoundly alter the lives of nearly every human being on this planet. And while 2020 was a steep learning curve, I'm proud to say that we have embraced a growth mindset and leaned into the discomfort just as we ask our students to do and that we have been rising to the challenges presented each day, no matter what the universe throws at us. 2020 took interim and its opportunities for global immersion from our students and faculty. In 2021, we reinvented this program four times to ensure that we remained true to our intentions and provided robust opportunities for experiential education even with a pandemic raging around us. 2020 saw an abrupt end to interscholastic athletic competition, leaving our scholar athletes in the lurch as they awaited alignment between governing bodies and the governor's office. And while we, once again, find ourselves stymied by COVID in this area, during the time in between, we have had single sport athletes experience the opportunity to cross train in up to three disciplines. And while doing so, 
play sports they might not have otherwise. We also managed to compete safely in a handful of IEA shows and were the top placing team from Colorado at the Zone 8 Finals. And despite a short season for boys soccer, the Danes still took home the Black Forest League and district titles. 2020 brought the cancellation of Round Square International Exchanges. In 2021, we have worked with partner schools around the globe to create vibrant opportunities to learn about each other's cultures and lives through synchronous virtual events and conferences spanning several time zones. And our virtual platform has allowed us to enroll visiting virtual Round Square students so that they may be a part of the daily rhythms and routines that define the FBS experience. 2020 saw many of our international students go home and remain there, unable to return to their adopted home here on the prairie due to travel restrictions and political posturing. In 2021, these same students stayed up late, as did our faculty, learning together through synchronous and asynchronous connections made possible by the robust virtual learning network that we have built for this purpose. And yet others among our international student population have not been home in more than two years, remaining abroad here in the U.S. during breaks because being here at FVS is that important to them and their families. 2020 interrupted plans to go all in on our senior capstone and global scholar diploma programs. This year, we have forged ahead and achieved our goal of making this opportunity for experiential education a graduation requirement. In this past week, we heard from each of our seniors who shared the fruits of their labor in subject areas that ranged from real estate development to disempowering systemic racism, spearfishing to sonatas, climate change to creating a Michelin five-star menu. One explored immigration law, another the importance of financial literacy. In total, we heard from 56 seniors who spent significant time diving deep into subjects of their choice and turning projects into passions. 2020's commencement was preempted by the pandemic and required that we gather virtually to celebrate our seniors. So we put together a production studio in the chapel and broadcast the event across the globe. And we are working hard at present to provide this once in a lifetime moment for the class of 2021 so that they can sit on graduation lawn with their families and join the ranks of proud Fountain Valley School alumni. I could continue, and these are just a few of the many, many stories of triumph in the face of adversity that paint a picture of Fountain Valley School rising. All of this would not have been possible without the incredible individuals on our faculty and staff who are here each and every day in support of our students. And they could not be here without the significant support provided by you, our community of alumni, families, and friends who step up each year in support of this wonderful school and its students. When we started this current fiscal year, we anticipated a $4 million deficit between what it would cost to operate the school and the money that we would bring in through tuition and fundraising. A generous group of donors have stepped forward and we have raised $2.8 million of our projected shortfall through a resiliency fund that has made this year possible without further staffing or program cuts. And thanks to the generosity of this community, our annual fund financial goal is within reach. However, our most important goal for today 
is the gift of your participation. And any gift counts, regardless of amount. So, first, I want to thank all of you who have already given this year, or just now, as our development office blows up your inbox with emails and text messages. And if you have not yet had a chance to give, I ask humbly that you join me and my family in support of Fountain Valley School. Your gifts to the annual fund support every aspect of the school, from academics to the arts and athletics, to teacher professional development and campus enhancements. And perhaps most importantly, your gifts support scholarships and financial aid, which ensure that we are able to attract the best and brightest students who bring the diversity of interests and worldviews that come together on our campus to provide the global immersion in the American West that is our brand of education. Thank you. Our reunion programs are now complete. And at this point, we will adjourn to the virtual class cocktail parties that we've planned. Check your email for the complete list of links and feel free to join wherever you wish. I'll be making the rounds and hope to see all of you at some point this evening. In the meantime, please take good care, stay safe, be well, and thank you for being here with us tonight and for all of your support of Fountain Valley School.